Mike, want to pull close. Thank you. You bet. Uh, good morning, Chairman Jordan, Ranking Member Plaskett, members of the committee. Uh, I thank you for the opportunity to testify here today. My name is Jonathan Fahey, and I'm an attorney with the law firm of Holtzman Vogel. I'm in private practice now, but I spent most of my 25 years as an attorney, as a prosecutor, both as a state and federal prosecutor. The reason I went to law school was because I wanted to be a prosecutor. Didn't want to be a law firm lawyer or anything else. I wanted to be a prosecutor. And the reason for that is my mom, uh, when I was growing up, my mom was an assistant commonwealth attorney in Arlington County, Virginia. And then she was eventually uh, elected to be the commonwealth attorney as a Democrat in Arlington, and later appointed by President Clinton to be the United States attorney for the Eastern District of Virginia. And I learned from my mom, what, I would go to court, I would sometimes watch trials and things like that, but I learned from her about the importance of being a prosecutor in terms of what it means to the public, in terms of public safety, but I also learned what it meant to administer justice, to be fair when you're entrusted with so much power. How you administer that reflects not only on the person that, that is the subject of that, but as the whole community, how we treat the accused, how we treat the most vulnerable victims. And, you know, I learned from her that being a prosecutor really wasn't a partisan job. It was a public safety job. It was a speaking for victims job. And that's the way it had really been in Virginia, where I live, and most of the country uh, up until about 10 years ago. And, you know, I say that because you could go through the country and you could see prosecutors that are Democrats, prosecutors that are Republicans, but they really approached the job the same way until recently. But I began my career after law school, after clerking in state court, I became a state prosecutor in Fairfax County. Uh, there, I served under Bob Horan, who was an elected Democrat, and he had been the Commonwealth's attorney for probably 30 years or so at that point. And I had the opportunity to, to prosecute cases anywhere from the lowest level misdemeanor cases to the most violent felons. And again, I learned a lot of lessons there. But the most important lesson I learned was you're entrusted with so much power from the, the position, from the community, and how you administer that power is what's most important. What you, you don't prosecute people because you don't like them or you have some other ul ulterior motive. You prosecute them because um, they violated the law and you're treating people equally, equally regardless of the political motivations or political parties or anything else they might have. Um, I went over from the Commonwealth Attorney's Office to the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Eastern District of Virginia, where I served for 17 years. I served under multiple administrations, but from uh, George W. Bush to Obama to President Trump. And also what I learned there, no matter who was within that office, people were professional. I, I had a chance to work with the most talented, probably, attorneys I've ever worked with. And one thing that that during that tenure, people's political, whatever their political leanings were, you rarely knew other than maybe outside of work. And while I was there, I had the opportunity to, to prosecute drug traffickers, gang members, fraudsters, other types of crimes. I also had the opportunity to prosecute, um, to train younger prosecutors on how to prosecute cases, ethics, things of that nature. Uh, the reason I go into my background, and I know the time is short, is the reason I'm here today, I would say, is because of the progressive prosecutor movement, you know, funded by these outside groups. Um, this started about 10 years ago, these progressive prosecutors being elected through funding from outside groups as uh, mostly in Democrat jurisdictions. They defeated incumbent Democrats, and the movement basically is sort of the underlying premise was the entire system was unjust, therefore the prosecutor can do whatever they want. And you see, saw that in Philadelphia, you see it in Chicago, which incidentally I think had 100 plus people shot over the weekend. You see it in LA, other places. And essentially what these prosecutors have done is to institute what they would call criminal justice reform. They would go into office and they would nullify any laws they did not like. And that seems somewhat benign in some respects, but the problem with it, as you see with Alvin Bragg, which I'll get into briefly at the end of my five minutes here, but Alvin Bragg has taken this, he was a progressive prosecutor in New York. He ran on this progressive prosecutor, uh, I guess, uh, as a progressive prosecutor, 
And when he got into office, his main theme was deciding not to prosecute cases, basically not in prosecuting any misdemeanors whatsoever, reducing misdemeanors to felonies, and reducing serious felonies to lesser felonies. So all of his theme for running, his in-office practice has led to, I think, New York the last two years have had the highest uh, crime rate on the big seven crimes in the last 20 years. But he's taken this a step further because, again, it's somewhat benign to say I won't prosecute trespassing, but this sort of opened the door for the political prosecution of Donald Trump, which, as we've seen, you know, now it's taken from not prosecuting to identifying a political opponent and prosecuting them for political reasons. I'll talk to someone in my testimony, hopefully, about the reasons behind the prosecution, the errors in the case, and how the immunity decision affects the case. And I thank you for your time, and I look forward to your questions, and I apologize for going a little oh, bit over. That's it, it, fine, Mr. Fay. Thank you. Uh, 